Is it on? Okay. Oh, hey. Whoa. In the dark shadows, in the white cold, fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tomes. The order of the Abracast. We are the brave and the bold. The Abracast. A cult. History. Conspiracy. And violence. Hey everybody, this is John Towers. This is a live recording um, and we're talking, we're picking up our series on, uh, I think it's it's part four or part five, I guess. If you, we just did a, a fellow craft episode on the, the many lessons of Zarathustra part one where I covered um, the speeches and whatnot from um, the first three episodes. Um, so I am going to get a, uh, all right. Okay. Um, so I got a couple things to talk about before we get started and I'm going to try to keep my eye on this chat in case any of you are joining me. Um, first of all, uh, Hey man, have fun tomorrow. Eat some burgers, some dogs, some corn on the cob, some, potato salad drink some goddamn budweiser because america and i say that unironically like you we live in the best country in the world and tomorrow the celebration for tomorrow is all about uh our founding documents which are brilliant <laughs> i've read them on the show before like um the, these are guys that got that locked themselves away for months and they created a set in a series of thoughts on paper that changed the world. And I think that maybe I'll just get on tomorrow and just start reading these things. If I get bored or something, but people today are just like, yeah, they're just a bunch of old rich white dudes, you know? And like the documents are, they're living documents and they evolve over time. And all of this, we forget, how revolutionary, you know, these, these thoughts and these ideas were. And, um, I always go back to Tom Paine's Thomas Paine, uh, wrote this huge thing about the evil of hereditary kingship and two pieces of paper flipped flip the script on all of that. So I seriously, you know, have fun, man, have serious fun. And, um, you know, but at the same time, be careful because those founding documents don't mean shit when you get stuck in a DUI checkpoint. So there are cops out there that are looking for you tomorrow. They're looking for you to fuck up tomorrow and they don't give a fuck about your fourth amendment rights so um if you're like what is he fucking talking about just go look at the fourth amendment it makes it pretty plain <laughs> that you need to have probable cause to uh do a search and seizure not the probable cause isn't you're just driving down the fucking road so i want to you know remind everybody get a ride share app on your phone if you have a little bit too much fun think about what old uncle john is telling you they're out to find you and they don't give a fuck about your fourth amendment rights. So uh, with all that being said, you jump into something equally or even more depressing. <laughs> um, a uh, friend, a friend of mine uh, from the show, a listener who is a friend of mine, we met through the show, um, reached out to me a few weeks ago and I feel shitty cause I haven't mentioned it until now, but um, it is on my radar right now. And a friend of his, 
uh, was returning vet and he wound up committing suicide. And there's a, um, there's a statistic. I don't, I'm not exactly 100% sure what it is, but it's like, you know, every hour or every day or something, um, a bunch 20, I seriously don't know what it is, but I know that it's bad. Uh, we'll just say like every day, 22 returning vets, uh, opt out or, or commit suicide. And, you know, when vets, when people in the military go away and they come back, they're not the same people and the world doesn't understand them. And, you know, I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, you know, but you look at these numbers and you're like, something is, something is wrong. Something's broken. And this guy, um, Jesse is his name. He, um, Jesse told me that, uh, this guy was a legitimate hero. Uh, I believe he got like a bronze, like a bronze star. Like he's a legitimate hero, this dude. And he, um, he, he took his own life. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes not to drag everybody down or whatever. I mean, we have a fun show. We're going to have a fun show. We're going to have a fun time, but I want to be like, Hey man, if you have any of these vets in your life and you're worried about them, you know, it's, it's kind of our job to, to be like, Hey man, you know, John, was a weird dude before he went, before he left, before he went to the army, (laughs) but he's a little weirder now, you know, not saying that weirdness is, you know, is a sign of suicide, but you know, if you, if you have someone in your life that you think is struggling, you know, there's a veterans crisis line out there. It's 1-800-273-8255. And all you have to do is press one. Um, the calls, uh, are confidential. Um, uh, they're confidential. You could go to, um, I think there's a chat. Uh, if you go to veterans crisis line.net or just text eight, three, eight, two, five, five, or encourage the people that you're worried about to, to do this. You know, another thing is they take, they send you away. They turn you into a fucking superhero, you know what I mean? They turn you into a superhero and then they dump you back into normal everyday life. Like it's all going to be all right. <laughs> and to some folks it is to some folks. It isn't again. I'm, I am not qualified at all to be talking about this gentleman or his situation or anybody's situation. But, um, you know, for Jesse's sake, I wanted to bring it up and I want to give you this information. It's text eight, or text to eight three eight two five five, or there's a confidential crisis chat at veteranscrisisline.net dot net, or call one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five and press one. Uh, so now that all the now that all the <laughs> DUI checkpoints and uh, opting out is off the table, um, I'm <laughs> your host John Towers, and we're gonna be. Uh, getting back into Nietzsche, uh, thus spoke Zarathustra this evening. We're going to pick it up. I actually, I actually, um, yeah, we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up at the, um, this, they call it the speeches. I'm going to pick it up at the speech of the despisers of the body, which evidently I jumped Uh, I jumped ahead a little bit on my fellow craft <laughs> episode. So, um, for, I don't know, every three of these Zarathustra or four or five or what, however it winds up working out, I'm going to do a fellow craft episode. So the fellow craft episodes are on subscribe star and they're exclusive episodes. You join on there, you get a bunch of stuff, but the things that you get that no one else gets are bonus episodes. Um, so I think right now there's like 18 or 19 bonus episodes. You can only get them at subscribe star and, um, the ones for the Zarathustra stuff is going to be the lessons that I learned or we were able to unpack while reading Zarathustra. So I let it breathe for a few days. I go back to it and, and I start, you know, searching the web or writing down my own thoughts or whatever about it. So, um, 
the one that I recorded last night, which is the many lessons of Zarathustra part one was I was on fire. I was on fire. You know, I think you'll hear a, a preview of it later on um, in this um, live episode. So if you're playing at home, now's the time to do it. You know what? Go summon your vessel of the art. Go mix up your weapon of mass attraction. I got a shout out to some of my Twitter folks because <laughs> this, guy, this guy found me um, the last live recording that I did. And he was like, don't you just not pay attention to your Twitter? I've been tweeting at you for months. And I was like, oh, bro, no. Like, I totally um, don't because Twitter is a gutter in my experience. So. I got on there and I went through and I answered a bunch of uh, tweets and stuff that people had um, uh, tweeted to me, you know, for the last like three months or something like that. So, uh, sh you know, sh shout out to all my Twitter folks. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for neglecting you. He was like, I hear you talking about interacting with listeners and stuff. And I'm like, this motherfucker's not answering me. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so I'm going to get better at it. I'm going to get better at it. And this one guy, uh, one of his questions, he tweeted at me and he was like, so a gin jihad is just a double gin and, and tonic served in a mason jar? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I guess that's, that is what it is. I guess it's not too complicated after all. <laughs> all right, so here it is. Uh, drink up. <clears throat> Let's get into some Zarathustra. Mm -hmm. All right, so Zarathustra mm, starts talking. He's going to give a sermon. I call I keep calling it a sermon. They call it a speech most of the time. But he starts talking about these um, despisers of the body. And he says, I want to speak to the despisers of the body and I would not, I would not have them. <clears throat> sorry. I got to, of course I'm live. I can't do anything about it. <sighs> they should build a cough button into this fucking soundboard app. Anyhow, that's my rate. That's my suggestion. St Spreaker studio. <sighs> I want to speak to the despisers of the body. I would not have them learn and teach differently, but merely say farewell to their own bodies and thus become silent. <laughs> Nietzsche would be the, like the king of Twitter burns. Quote, body am I and soul and speak uh, the child. And why should one not speak like children? But the awakened and knowing say, body am I entirely and nothing else. And soul is only a word for something about the body. The body is a great reason, plurality with one sense, a war and a peace, a herd and a shepherd and an instrument of your body is also your little reason. My brother, which you call spirit is a little instrument, a little toy of your great reason. I, you say, and are proud of the word, but greater is that in which you do not wish to have faith. Your body and its great reason that does not say I, but says, but does I. What the sense feels what the spot, what the spirit knows never has its end in itself, but senses and spirit would persuade you that they are at the end of all things that is how vain they are. Instruments and toys are sense and spirit and behind them still lies the self, the self also the ears of the spirit. Always the self listens and seeks and compares. It overpowers and conquers and destroys. It controls and in its control of the ego too. 
And behind your thoughts and feelings, my brother, there stands a mighty ruler, an unknown sage whose name is Self. And in your body he dwells. He is in your body. Whoa, bro. Back up in the prison shower. There is more reason in your body than in your best wisdom. And who knows why your body needs precisely your best wisdom. Your self laughs at your ego and it boldly leaps. <clears throat> and it boldly leaps in flights of thought to me. It says to itself, a detour to my end. I am the leading strings of the ego and the promoter of its concepts. And the self says to the ego, feel pain here. Then the ego suffers and thinks how it might suffer no more. And that is why it is made to think. It was made to think. The self says to the ego, feel pleasure here. Then the ego is pleased and he thinks how it might often be pleased again. And that is why it is made to think. I want to speak to the despisers of the body. It is their respect that begets their contempt. That um, What is it that created respect and contempt and worth and will? What creative self created respect and contempt? It created pleasure and pain. It created the creative body created the spirit as the hand for its will. Even in your folly and contempt, your, you despisers of the body, you serve yourself. And I say unto you, yourself, itself wants to die and turns away from life. It is no longer capable of what it would do above all else to create beyond itself that it is what it would do above all else. What is its fervent wish? But now it is too late for it to do this for yourself wants to go under. This is Nietzsche's way of saying like he's on a pilgrimage or maybe a mission. Like he's going under to preach to the world. It goes all the way back to, the introduction of the speak there Thustra, when we find him uh, at first, he's on a hit, he's on the mountain. He's living on this mountain for 30 years and he goes under to inter to introduce the idea of the Ubermensch or the Superman, the overman to the people. Remember that's when the, there's a forest wizard. That's like, what are you doing? Like, you don't even, why are you even fucking around with these people? They're never going to get it. <laughs> and he's like, well, what are you doing? And he's like, I just hang out with the birds and the bears and stuff. And I sing and dance to myself <laughs> and I praise God. And that's when Zarathustra says he doesn't know that God is dead. Even in your folly, back to the book, I'm sorry. Even to your folly and contempt, your despisers of the body, you serve yourself. And I say unto you, uh, I already read this, but skipping ahead. <laughs> but now it is too late for uh, it to do this. So yourself wants to go under. Oh, despisers of your body, despisers of the body, yourself wants to go under. And that is why you have become despisers of the body for you no longer able to create beyond yourself. And that is why you are angry with life and the earth, the unconscious envy speaks out and the squint eyed glance of your contempt. I say not go your way. Go your own way. Go your own way. Oh, despisers of the body, you are no bridge to the overman. Thus spoke Zarathustra. So I mentioned um, that when I did the many lessons of Zarathustra part one for the fellow craft 
episode um, that I included this. And when I did so, I, I veered wildly off um, to to this <laughs> this giant talk about um the differences between gnosticism and nihilism and um uh i referenced uh a book it's still down here hold on i referenced this book gnosticism new light on the ancient tradition of inner knowledge by stefan holler and he has a whole section dealing with why Gnosticism is not nihilism. And I find it interesting and it has to deal specifically with this thing because Gnostics or Gnostics are like anti-materialist. So, I mean, if you want to jump off into that deep pool, like I would just uh, recommend that, um, that episode to you. I mean, really, like, <laughs> I was on fire. I recorded it last night. I was on fire last night. <clears throat> All right, there's a quick one here. There's a quick, like I, I, like I said, in my brain, I call them sermons. They're usually called speeches. So, on joining and suffering the passions. Here, hold on, I need to annotate this real quick. While I wait, or while I'm doing this. Little, I got a little mini John Lee hooker that lives in my computer. Um, so... This is on enjoying and suffering the passions. Uh, My brother, this is the Zarathustra. This is Zarathustra. My brother, if you have a virtue and she is in your virtue, then you have her in common with nobody. To be sure, you want to call her name and pet her. Uh, you want to pull her ear and have fun with her. Well, I'll say Zarathustra and behold, now you have her name in common with the people and have become one of the people and heard with your virtue. I gotta... Sorry, hold on. I got a text message. So uh, I usually don't let my wife do much for me but, <laughs> but like at 7 55 i went upstairs uh I, I, mi- I mixed a drink and then i was like oh my god i only have one <laughs> bottle of tonic left <laughs> what am i gonna do <laughs> so she volunteered to go get tonic and then i'm like looking at the my gin supply and I'm like oh my god I think the stores are going to be closed tomorrow and she's like do you want me to go buy your gin too and I was like no no I don't want you to go buy it but I mean if you volunteer to do it that would be really cool you know I mean it is 8 o'clock at night and I've been telling people that I'm going to be doing this live podcast all day I'm going to start it at 8 o'clock I've been telling them and she was like okay I'll go do it so now I'm just waiting for the text message that she that someone crashed the car or threw a Molotov cocktail at it or, you know, whatever awful thing that could happen that will just add the guilt uh, to me. That's not what the text message said. Uh, The text message was fairly innocuous, random. Uh, Back to the book. You would do better to say, oh God, inexorable and nameless is that which gives my soul agony and sweetness and even the hunger of my entrails. Well, that is unfortunate. May your virtue be too exalted for the familiar, familiar, familiarity of names 
And if you must speak of her, then do not be ashamed to stammer of her. Then speak and stammer. This is my God. This I love. It pleases me wholly. Thus alone do I want the good. I do not want it as divine law. I do not want it as a human statute and a need. I shall not be a signpost for me to over-earths and paradise. It is an earthly virtue that I love. There is little prudence in it. But least of all, the reason of all men. <clears throat> but Sorry about that. But this bird built a nest with me. Therefore, I love and caress it. Now it dwells with me sitting on its golden eggs. Thus you shall stammer and praise your virtue. Once you suffer passions and called them evil, but now... You have only your virtues left. They grew out of your passions and command your highest goal to the heart of these passions. And they become your virtues and passions you enjoyed. <clears throat> and whether you came from the tribe of the choleric or of the voluptuous or of the fanatic or of the vengeful. In the end, all of your passions become virtues, and all of your devils, angels. Once you had a wild dog in your cellar, but now at the end they turned into birds and lovely singers. Hmm. There's a lot. I, this uh, inversion that he's talking about is very interesting, especially nowadays. But of your poisons, you brewed your ball... Uh, balsam you milked your cow melancholy now you drink the sweet milk of her udder <laughs> and nothing evil grows out of you henceforth unless it be the evil that grows out of the fight among your virtues my brother if you are fortunate, you have only one virtue and no more. This is an idea that he talked about in the um, in the introduction, I think. I'm trying to go back that far. You know, you do all this heavy reading when you're drinking, and everything gets mixed up in there. <laughs> it might have been in the speech. Okay, I don't know. Um. Mm, and when we unpack it, we'll get down to the bottom of it. <clears throat> My brother, if you are fortunate, you have only one virtue and no more. Then you will pass over the bridge more easily. It is the distinction to have many virtues, but a hard lot. And many have gone into the desert and taken their lives because they had wearied of being the battle and the battlefield of virtues. Man, I'll tell you what, he really talks a lot of sh shit that you can put, that you can transpose onto social justice warriors, right? Let me re just reread this last sentence. It is a distinction to have many virtues, virtue signaling. This is a, this is one of these words that we hear all the time when we talk about social justice warrior ism, uh, but a hard lot. And many have gone into the desert and taken their lives because they had wearied of being the battle and the battlefield of virtues. Um, so he says the distinction is a distinction to have many virtues, but it's a hard lot. So, I mean, I kind of take that, I juxtapose it or force it round peg into a square hole or whatever, like this idea, this it's, you have to have virtues <clears throat> and it's a hard lot, a hard lot, meaning maybe perhaps that, um, where, whatever your virtues say you you like have to race to be a victim you have to be a more victimized victim than your victim is it has to be a hard lot i wish someone would write about that i, w I wish someone would do some 
I'm sure I'm sure someone has. I'll find it if it is. My back to it. <clears throat> My brother are war in battle evil. Well, we already know that Nietzsche doesn't like to assign moral values. Um, but this evil is necessary. Necessary are the envy and the mistrust. Look at this envy and mistrust. This is what do we see all around us? We see, um, class warfare. And I don't know what this word is, but it sounds awful. Calumny, um, among your virtues, behold how each of your virtues covets, class warfare, what is highest. Each wants your whole spirit that might become her herald. Each wants your whole strength in wrath, wrath, hatred, and love. Look at what happened in the streets of Portland last this week. <laughs> Each virtue is jealous of the others, and jealousy is a terrible thing. Virtues too can perish of jealousy. Surrounded by the flame of jealousy, one will uh in the end, like a scorpion, turn one's poisonous sting against oneself. A lot alas. My brothers, have you never yet seen a virtue deny and stab herself? You can just copy and paste this onto some memes on Facebook. You can become a Facebook hero with this kind of stuff. And you can literally put, thus spake Zarathustra. Man is, <laughs> man is something that must be overcome, and therefore you shall love your virtues, for you will perish of them. Thus spoke Zarathustra. Hey y'all, I'm Leah Lawrence. I'm her husband Mitch Lawrence. And we host the Southern Spirits Podcast. Each week we'll sip on a Southern brewed craft beer or wine and toss back a Southern distilled liquor and I'll let y'all know how I feel about them with a review. And after we are good and tipsy, I'll bust out a couple of strange spooky tales from the American South. We are all about true crimes, mysteries, paranormal activity, and cryptozoology. Basically, if it's Southern and boozy, we'll drink it. And if it's Southern and weird, we'll talk about it. So join us as we drink our way through the folklore of the South. Find the Southern Spirits Podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Bye, y'all. It is an apprentice in the order of the Abercast who now wishes to receive more light by passing to the degree of the fellow craft. He is prepared, worthy, and well qualified, and he is vouched for. Let him enter in the name of the Lord and be received in due form. Learn more at theabercast.com. Get graphic elements, notes, worksheets, and text versions of selected episodes, as well as access to the private Abercast workgroup by signing into the mailing list. Get all that plus exclusive episodes by supporting the show and becoming a subscriber at subscribestar.com. I've been having a sh <laughs> I've been having an awesome streak of shitty events in my life, and one day I was just like tinkering around with this new app that my podcast host um, had, and I was like, "Oh, there's like a go live feature here." So I hit the button, and we start uh, we started experimenting with going live, and I grabbed this uh, my Nietzsche book. My I think it's called. Is it called portable? The portable Nietzsche. <laughs> and I started talking about Zus Speak Zarathustra. And I was like, hey, man, I'm just going to do whenever I'm having a shitty day. I'm just going to do one of these live episodes. We're just going to chip away through this gigantic fucking book. Well, um, I actually had to take a break, <laughs> but we did three. Uh, we did three like in a row. And, um, because we were just experimenting with it, uh, I had to use like a different mic. I couldn't get this shit through my sound. Anyhow, it sounds a little bit different, but I'm working on it. I ordered a new part and all this other kind of stuff. So, um, but with the fellow craft episodes, I would do a series traditionally, all of them, except for one, I would do a series and then I would do like 
an extra episode where I'm like, this is what I learned from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, the Atlantean. Or this is what I learned through when I read the first part of section one of Libra four, or this is what I learned when I read, uh, this, um, phallic influences in ancient religions or whatever. So I thought, cause I'm throwing these live episodes at you guys. I thought that I could instead flip over to the fellow craft episodes and do the, this is what I learned when I read, or this is what I thought of when I read, um, you know, these first three or four sermons or speeches of Therathustra. So here's a short preview. And, um, you know, uh, it's all on the, the one and only fellow craft tier of subscribe star. Uh, so I hope you guys dig it. I hope you like it. I hope you come over. Uh, I'm actually learning quite a lot. And <laughs> this episode takes a wild left turn uh, into some... Um, Stuff. So, anyhow, uh, I hope you guys dig this. And beware that there's some more live episodes coming up. Actually, this week. Um, yeah, there, I mean, it's coming up fast. If not today, tomorrow. If not, well, I'm probably going to take the fourth off. But there's some live, we're doing Zarathustra this week, live episodes. Um, a good way to know when we're going live is subscribe on subscribe star or sign into the mailing list and get access to the work group where I'm publishing all this stuff. So, all right, man, here, check it out. I hope you like it. But cowers out in the lion stage. The subject of spiritual transformation must engage the dragon into mortal combat. Finish him. One night, uh, one needs to be a lion in spirit to defeat the law of thou shalt and affirm the conditions of one's flourishing. Okay, so let's bounce this up next to the communism thing. You know, the communism, you're carrying the load for everybody. Well, this lion's like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm doing what I, what I want to do. And even more illustrative... <laughs> After that statement is made, King Ghidorah comes down and he was like, no, bitch, thou shalt. <laughs> Shooting that gold lightning all over the place with his three fucking giant snake heads. <clears throat> and the lion's like, thou shalt. That's what you're saying. I'm saying, fuck you. And he does. He's the lion in my, in my makeshift uh, analysis here that I'm just getting into. The lion is the the free market. <laughs> that might be ridiculous. I need to Google search this stuff because I literally it just came to me while I was reading this. Okay, so <laughs> I'm I stated many times I'm not a philosopher. I'm not very deep. And I'm uh, not a Nietzsche, Nietzsche and scholar. There is no happiness in fighting dragons all one's life, however. To complete the three metamorphosis, the lion must become a child. Maturity, for Nietzsche means rediscovering the seriousness one had as a child at play. Okay, so if you've been a listener for any amount of time, I say any amount of time. Like, it doesn't come up every fucking week. But every once in a while, I talk about um, rites of passage, which came up in earlier to do uh, the most boredomsome insights and to force ourselves to dwell on them as a rite of passage. So uh, I, I speak sometimes about our culture having gotten rid of the rites of passage, where you know, you can put on a robe and you can light some weird candles and you can have some kind of initiation ritual where there's creative play going on somewhere in your psychology. You know, this whole thing started when in my head, this whole thing started when I was reading, when we were going through the lesser key of Solomon episodes. And I was like, I ref I got a little bit of pushback on people going, you need to do a disclaimer at the beginning of these, that people should not be summoning demons. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> 
if somebody wants to turn their lights off in their house and to light some candles and to put some robes on and to start praying to Adonai and Tetragrammaton and all of this stuff, I, that we need that because we have no other place in our daily lives where we can get weird they kind of scare ourselves a little bit and charge us up you know with being weird i'm not warning people against this i'm encouraging it is what is what i would have said um and i really kind of started unpacking unpacking that you know we look into rituals of freemasonry or you know the initiation rituals and then all the little plays and stuff that they do when they're going through their their degrees and stuff they're it's doing they're having creative play they're having fun they're being able to not worry about their mortgage and their car payments and all of this stuff as a matter of fact, you know what? I should fucking get a robe right now and fucking do some fucking ritual magic because I need a fucking vacation for my life right now. I'm having the worst fucking two months back to back to back that I've had in a long fucking time. So what I'm saying is, um, you know, we're talking about this seriousness one has as a child at play. You might be like... Towers. I play all the time. My I play f- games on my phone. I play games on my PS4 or whatever. I play fucking Guitar Hero, Candy Crush. I'm a Candy Crush master. I'm a fruit ninja. That's passive play, bros. Someone else's imagination set this up for you. I'm talking about creative play. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm being... A little too tyrannical. I apologize. I'm not trying to be tyrannical. I'm like, you have to play, motherfuckers. Play! Back to this thing. A childlike spirit is vital to happiness, health, and well-being. That child, Nietzsche says, is innocence and forgetting. It's a new beginning, a sport of self-propelling wheel, a sacred yes. The lion becomes a child when the individual says, I will cease to affirm their values contrary to the law of thou shalt and affirms them instead for the sport of creation. The spirit now wills its own will its own world life is no longer a um, reactive struggle to defeat other forces life is a celebration of one's powers and sustained act of pure affirmation like the child spirit who knows the joy of life and the innocence of perpetual creation Philosophy helps me evolve from the camel to the lion, but I'm still working on becoming a child, and it's a long way back to the beginning of one's life. But uh, this is where I am headed, and Nietzsche was wrong about many things, but he was right to argue that a light, innocent, affirmative approach to life is vital to spiritual flourishing and the creative existence as well. I mean, I don't know if I should get into this now or if I'm going to get a chance to get into it later. Yeah, I'm going to skip. Uh, all right, so. Learn more at theabracast.com. Get graphic elements, notes, worksheets, and text versions of selected episodes, as well as access to the private Abracast workgroup by signing into the mailing list. Get all that plus exclusive episodes by supporting the show and becoming a subscriber at subscribestar.com. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Hold on, I'm all disheveled. Okay. um, All right, so... Okay, so the next sermon or the next speech that we run into is called the On the Pale Criminal. Uh, you do not want to kill, O oh, judges and sacrificers, until the animal has nodded. Behold the pale criminal. <clears throat> 
has nodded, and his eyes speak the gr- to the. Oh, hold on a Out of his eyes speaks the great contempt. My ego is something that shall be overcome. My ego is to me the great contempt of man. That is what his eyes say. And the judge himself. That was <laughs> that was the highest moment. Do not let the sublime return to his baseness. There is no redemption for the one who suffers so of himself except for a quick death. Your killing, O oh judges, shall pity and not revenge. And you shall kill. You shall kill. Be sure that you yourselves justify life and it is not enough to make your peace with the man that you kill. Your sadness shall be love of the overman. Thus you shall justify your living on, quote, enemy, unquote, and you shall say, but not, quote, villain or sick. You shall say you are not a scoundrel or a fool, but you shall be not a sinner. And you, red judge, if you were to tell out loud all that you have already done and thought, everyone would cry. Away with the filth in this poisonous worm. We've talked about the worm many times in these Zarathustra episodes. The conqueror worm. When I was a worm, I couldn't get through it. <clears throat> but thought is one thing, the deed is another, and the image is of the dead still another. The wheel of ca- causality does not roll between them. An image made this pale man pale. He was equal to his deed when he did it, but he could not bear its image after it was done. This is going to be so interesting in the fellow craft episode. Um, mm, I have a feeling it's going to be guilt and karma. Now, he only saw himself as a doer of one deed. Madness, I call this. And exception now become the essence for him. A chalk streak stops a hen. I don't know what that means. And (laughs) the stroke that he himself stroked stopped the poor reason and madness after the deed. I call this listen. Oh, judges, there is yet another madness. And that comes before the dead. Alas, you have not yet crept deep enough into the soul. Thus speaks the red judge. I'm sorry. Mother. Why did this criminal murder? He wanted to rob. I think we really need to think about this today. When we're, when we're th- like when we're looking at when they see us and when we're talking about um uh criminal justice reform in the modern era, you know, 2019, 2020, it's a big deal. Criminal we should just let all these people out of jail. Thus Speaks the red judge. Why did this criminal murder? He wanted to rob. But why did I say unto you his soul wanted blood, not robbery? He thirsted after the bliss of the knife. His poor reason, however, did not comprehend this madness and persuaded him. What matters blood, he asked. 
Don't you want to at least commit a robbery with it to take revenge? Think about that. Interesting. <clears throat> and he listened to this poor reason. Its speech lay upon him like lead. And so he robbed when he murdered and he did not want to be ashamed of his madness. And now the lead of his guilt lies upon the lead of his guilt lies upon him. And again, his poor reason is so stiff, so paralyzed and so heavy. If only uh, he could shake his head, then his burden would roll off. But who could shake his head? But what of this man, a heap of diseases, which through the spirit reaches out into the world there, they want to catch upon their prey. What is this man, a ball of wild snakes, which rarely enjoy rest from each other. So they go forth singly and seek and pray in the world. Behold this poor body which has suffered and co coveted this poor soul interrupted for itself interrupted. It is murderous lust and greed for the bliss of the knife. Those who become sick today are overcome by that evil, which is evil today. They want to become with that another evil and good once doubt, was evil and the will itself. And then the sick became heretics or witches as heretics or witches. They suffered and wanted to inflict the suffering, but your ears do not want to accept this. It harms your good people. You say to me, but what matter your good people to me? much about your good people nauseates me and verily it is not their evil indeed i wish that had madness of which they might perish like this pale criminal verily i wish their madness were called truth of loyalty or justice but they have their virtue in order and they live long and in wretched contentment. And I am railing by their torrent. Let those who can grasp me. That's kind of been my whole theme through my adult life. If you want, grasp me. I just need a place to park this. Your crutch, however, I am not. And thus spoke Zarathustra. Where's my fucking bookmark, yo? <clears throat> All right, so that's been... Thus spoke Zarathustra live part four and I'm John Towers and uh, check out the subscribe star. If you're, if you're interested in the, the spoke Zarathustra, we got deep uh, last night. I did a, a fellow craft episode and we got, we got deep. You guys got to hear some of that um, in the break that we took. So I could <laughs> refill my drink. Um, yeah, so um, it's super interesting, and I'm not going to stop. We're going to get through this whole goddamn book. It's a gigantic book. We're going to get through the whole thing, and um, yeah, this is just one uh, stop on the way station along. So thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying. If you're not enjoying the whole show, I hope you enjoy this series. Um yeah. So, all right. Um, and also thanks for, uh, so the Southern spirits podcast, uh, they played an ad of mine. So I'm going to play an ad of theirs. I already did it once. We already, already did it. 
Hey y'all, I'm Leah Lawrence. I'm her husband Mitch Lawrence. And we host the Southern Spirits Podcast. Each week we'll sip on a Southern brewed craft beer or wine and toss back a Southern distilled liquor and I'll let y'all know how I feel about them with a review. And after we are good and tipsy, I'll bust out a couple of strange spooky tales from the American South. We are all about true crimes, mysteries, paranormal activity, and cryptozoology. Basically, if it's Southern and boozy, we'll drink it, and if it's Southern and weird, we'll talk about it. So join us as we drink our way through the folklore of the South. Find the Southern Spirits Podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Bye, y'all. Learn more at theabracast.com. Get graphic elements, notes, worksheets, and text versions of selected episodes, as well as access to the private Abracast workgroup by signing into the mailing list. Get all that plus exclusive episodes by supporting the show and becoming a subscriber at subscribestar.com.